Hi all, and welcome to the video. In this one, fixing the new engine for 2020. So at the moment, you may be looking at this and thinking, that looks a little bit better than AO generally does on my system. This is the new engine, or the beta engine, more accurately. However, we've done a little bit of twinking. So, first of all, I'm going to have to bail out of game to show you what I've done. Um, to make all these uh, tweaks and fixes to the new engine, we're going to need two new pieces of software that you may or may not have. If you followed the old guide to fixing the new engine from, was it 2015 or 16, then some of this will be quite familiar to you. So initially we're going to need NVIDIA Inspector. So if we search for that, and the top answer is Guru of 3D, which shouldn't give you too much trouble. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see you can download it from there. So let's do that. It should automatically start downloading. There we are. It's done it. Now, I already have it, so I don't need to mess around with that. The second thing we need to find is a very small program called Reshade. So the reshade.me is the best place to go for it. It's the actual site that it's from. So if we click on that, You'll find the various things here, a, a download there. I would um, scroll all the way to the bottom and download it from there. There you go. There's Reshade. It looks like the um, PC Master Race guy. Right, now we've got those two, we need to use an NVIDIA N Inspector. So I'm going to move this over to this monitor so you can all see. Now, if I start the program tells you various information about your graphics card, etc. But we are more interested in this button here, which says Show Profile Inspector. And it opens this window. You can literally close this one there. Leave it have a scan through all the uh, drivers it finds for NVIDIA. And here they all are. Now, previously, in the old video, we used... Um, the closest match to the new engine, which was The Secret World. This time, however, having tried literally hundreds of different reshades, we're going to be using a different one. So if you search Unigin, there we go, and we want right down at the bottom there, Unigin Valley Demo. Right, there we go. Now then, um, if you come across to this button, so exactly as before, and click the Add Application to Current Profile. If we click on there, and obviously I've been here before, but if you browse to your main Anarchy Online folder, you'll find the executables for the game. So if you click on that one, Anarchy Online XE, click Add. It's already added because I've done this. Click again, Add Anarchy Online.exe. And again, it says you've already got this. And you may as well, while you're here, add this one as well. There you go. They're all added. So, are we done? No. There's a few things we need to change. So, frame limiter is the first change. When you click on it initially, it's somewhere down here. But if you click all the way up to off. Um, following on, we can ignore the G-Sync options. I'm not using any of them. Uh, anti-aliasing behavior flags, we're going to turn this to off, none. And to, uh, the rest are not then involved. Anti-aliasing mode, we want to make sure that this isn't set to override, enhance or anything else, simply application controlled. Each time we're doing this, we need to be remembering to click apply changes. Further down, uh, antitropic filtering mode I've set to application controlled again click on it usually says user defined or off but 
set this to application controlled and filtering setting give it the maximum of 16 which is the maximum the game engine will natively do you don't need it to be any higher then make sure these are all clicked off which try to stop that being enabled further down ambient occlusion is rather problematic with anarchy online and to be quite honest i found you're generally better off without it so you can set that to off and usage to disabled it's up to you you can experiment with it but generally i find that you will end up with random wetness and oiliness around various objects and npcs which can be really quite weird so that's all those done if we scroll further down there's stereo field ansel flags and stuff these settings down here could possibly help um laptop users with combined graphics and that's basically it we click apply and we're pretty much done okay so we're going to close this program now and use the reshade now the reshade I already have installed in the Anarchy Online folder. So if you open the folder for your Anarchy Online, mine lives on here. There it is. And you can see that I already have a lot of extra files in here from various things I've done messing around, but they're not affecting what we're doing here. So if you move the executable you've downloaded, which is the reshade, move it into this folder here and double click tell it it's okay to run the executable and it says click here to select a game and manage its reshade installation there's also um, options for vulcan globally affects all but anyway so we're going to go along here and we want to add either clients or click on browse so if we go to browse we can say Anarchy Online, that's EXE, DX9, I'm going to say update. Um, you can see here, you've got all this new stuff here. Standard effects, suite FX, etc. So if you want, you can check all of them and have a good mess around with them if you'd like. Um, they just give you hundreds of different options. We do not need all of these to arrive at what you're seeing on your screen from previously at the beginning of the video but if you want to install them by all means do i'm just going to say skip okay and that's it the reshade is done now then when we now start up the game we're not ready no first of all right click your desktop and let's go to nvidia control panel surprise surprise it opened up on the wrong page generally the first thing you'll see is this with that i would say you'll probably find that the drivers have set performance over there instead of quality. You said it's a quality, but then check on used the uh, advanced settings and just click apply. It will make the decision based on whichever game your settings are set to. So we click on manage 3D settings and then we go to program settings. Now, give this a few moments to scan all the games on your system. And you'll now see that I have Anarchy Online EXE added to Unigine Valley Demo. Now, the first thing you're going to change is this, which is built in to the new NVIDIA drivers, which is uh, sh uh, sharpening, image sharpening. This is a very low impact, but high, uh, but very high quality sharpening filter that's better than anything in the reshade catalog and it's doing it at a hardware level it seems because the performance impact is negligible and the effect is nice this is set to the default which you can see there plain as day we say okay anisotropic filtering should be highlighted and set to application controlled anti-aliasing mode again application anti-aliasing setting always wants to sort of mess with it but it's application controlled um yeah it, it wants the default to there but we're not doing that we don't want two types of anti-aliasing running at the same time that will hammer your performance and generally make the entire thing look very blurry and texture filtering quality just set that to quality it doesn't need to be high quality if you set it to high quality it doesn't make any visual difference 
but it does make a difference to performance. Threaded optimization switch to on. And then finally, virtually re, uh, virtual reality pre-rendered frames. Weird. Uh, but just set that to use the 3D application setting and you'll need to click apply if you've made any changes. I haven't because I have this installed. Okay, we're now ready to fire up the new engine. Click accept as normal and let's go to settings. So I'm running at 1440p, as you can see there. You can define that I run it in a window that is borderless. I've got FXAA, which is fast approximate anti-aliasing, is switched to off. And then the resolution, I've got full filtering, anisotropic, and I've set this to 16. You can adjust these from the in-game menu as well. Now then, we get to GTX 980, that's what I'm using. Uh, I use it on this one. This is the primary monitor. That is the secondary monitor. So this is going to vary a little bit. If you have a single monitor, you should only really have one, but you want T and L plus T plus L and HAL. Click OK and OK. Let's begin. OK. Now there's a bit of mess on the screen. Now I'm going to turn that off for you. Right, so here we are. Now, initially, you can see, if you look over here where my mouse cursor is now, on this shadow, you can see some jagged lines there. Down this corner here, also, there's some jagged lines. And especially noticeable here, along this edge, where the darker material reaches the edge of the plinth, or stand, or whatever you call it. This NT happens to be stood on. Now then, the default keys to activate the in-game menu is shift f2 which you can change i've already changed mine to the home key because it's not doing anything and if you want to change it to a key that is more useful to you and you may already know that shift f2 will do something in anarchy online and a lot of people still use that method to, to for healing and various other things i'm going to go to settings and the first setting is there overlay key so with this one, you can you can change it to insert, delete, um, page up if you wanted. I like home, but I mean, by all means, use whatever key suits you. Once you've done that, it's done. Now then, the only effect I'm currently using at the moment is this one, SMAA. Now, if I uncheck the tick box down here, which says performance mode, like so, you can see I have here everything on default the only thing i think i changed originally was this drop down i set to color edge detection if it's different set it to this these two i've left as default but they read as uh, 0 0.05 uh, 0 0.01 then max search steps i actually set to 32 and max search steps diagonal to 16. Uh, corner rounding are left at 50, and everything else is pretty much the default. So I'm going to click on performance mode again, ask it to reload, and then click out. Again, I'm, I'm getting that red error message there because of the way I install those. If you install all the extras, you wouldn't get that. It's because I've over-installed what was already there. You shouldn't see that as an error. Right, let's log in. Well, first of all, straight away, you probably noticed at the beginning, is there is now a shine to certain parts of the armour. My keeper is wearing here as she's dancing around and getting fed up with me, yabbering away on this screen. As you can see, the shoulder pads are actually shiny. Right, let's log in and take a little look around. Right, as you can see, here we are on the keeper again. Yes, indeed. And everything's looking rather nice, but there are one or two settings we should check. Now, if we press F10, you can see it'll go to here. You've got effects, environment, yada, yada. If we go to video settings. I've got the first three sliders are all dead center at 100. Ground quality I have set to 200 and ground quality radius. Everything ramped across to the right hand side. Ground render mode, I put auto detect. Um, you can put shadows or whatever, but auto-detect seems to work fine. Textures, LOD, so level of detail factor, again, rammed it over. Texture, resolution, full, and again, you can see the same settings repeated here. 
uh, filter mode and I put anisotropic and just rammed it across to 16. Uh, FXAA is now disabled. Then the view distance, I pretty much have everything else rammed across. The same for grass and grass radius. I forgot to add this earlier on, so I'm having to do it now. And now the lighting is better than it was when I was recording previously. Wouldn't you bloody know it? If I um, quickly pop that on, you can see I get about the same frames per second that I normally do. Let's have a look over here. You can see the nice transparency of the grid armor on this character. You can see their guns through them. Hopefully that shows up on the street on the stream on the recording etc and uh, i'll go back to the original recording i had which unfortunately was at night so you're going to be seeing well a lot less lighting damn it so you can see over here various examples of differences would be well if I can get near one, look at the market terminal here. You notice how much sharper that is now? You can see market search, etc. You can even see that's a kind of shotgun there and various other items sort of, em you know, emulating what it's like to use the market interface, which unfortunately doesn't look as good as that. You can also see on the dreadlock poster here that somebody's being shot at that the uh, the actual screen is has sort of the uh, scan lines that you would get on a regular um, CRT type monitor which is quite a nice touch actually it's kind of cool and then you can see here this chap who's now volunteered to be in the video unknowingly you can see on oh the sun's gone behind the hill but I was about to say like over here, this robot is now reflective in places, although he's not glaringly mirror-like reflective. He looks more like a sort of grubby stormtrooper. Sorry if that's your pet and you're proud of him. And ditto again when we go over to the mail terminal. The text is nice and sharp. Bargain dealer of car, yeah, looking cool. And the same again all around. The marble statue here again looks a great deal better now you have to remember that i did a six hour stream of all of this so we were checking all kinds of things if i look up at the sky and look at the norton uh, shipping ship you can see there's a lot more detail being pulled out than there was previously before they just sort of look blobby now they look well really cool Yes, they do. I'm leaving this on so you can sort of see what's going on under the hood. There's only like a 60% load on the CPU, or GPU rather, and only 21% on the CPU. And that is whilst recording. So, yes, a bit easier to see these things over here. But you can see how much sharper it Before, they were a bit of a blurry blob. Same with this. That looks a little blurry from this side. However, not so from this side. It's a lot sharper. It's weird the way that sign works. There should be, <laughs> it shouldn't show the same thing, but it does. So, yes. Oh, God. Uh, more more messages. Rage of Ra. Uh, hi, I like your stream very much. Watching me. Thank you and welcome back. Yes. Now, there was a lot of problems with indoor areas in the new engine, and a lot of it was the lighting from outdoors was being indoors. So, let's go in the clan mission agency. God help us. And now it's still doing it, I think, but nothing like as badly as it was before. The lighting in here seems to be more responsive to the objects and lighting that are in here. Case in point, if you look over there at the sort of whatever the hell that is that's emanating light, it's a white light, and you can see there's a white light there. And if I move into it with this character, it's actually reflecting on it. If I move away, it starts to go. If I move towards it, it's on there. Now, I've stayed with this character because it's quite good for showing off reflections, but it seems to do it on everything. The more reflective it is, the more light you notice is being sent that way. Even the detail on things like the green goo in the jar here. And then look at these. Look at the Kryzorch weapons. They're like the made from 
obsidian, black glass, volcanic glass. Look at this. As I sort of move around, they respond to where light is coming from. Also, the detail on them looks a hell of a lot sharper. The, uh, the green sort of embedded energy lines or whatever they are. Same again with, um, with these, as you can see here on this weapon. There's far more detail than I ever realized on these weapons. It's, uh, it's really quite something. And so on. Same with lights here. The shops were a big concern with the new engine. A lot of people couldn't handle it, especially the neutral shops, the fair trade. So let's head to Borealis, take a quick look at those. Like I say, the uh, stream I did, which unfortunately is six hours long, um, does cover 99% of Rubicar and Shadowlands. In fact, I ran the whole way from Nascent to pandemonium on a fixer it took about 30 minutes but you get to see like pretty much everywhere in shadowlands that way the grid yes of course the grid as well is now not messed up like it was before if i go up a floor you will see how much better it is like who didn't notice the pointy bits before and now the uh the big old light there the fan that's kind of weird is lit up but you can make out you know Rubicar underneath sort of on the ceiling as a map which apparently that's what that is There's, I don't know tear somewhere who knows anyway we were on our way to Borealis so let's go there now there's somebody or probably more than one person um, who is stood in this corner with a self illumination light source on so it's a bit buggy there but otherwise, everything else seems to be pretty good. It's not overblown. You've got to remember there are two lights in the sky, two suns over Rubicar. It is meant to feel like you're being bleached by the suns, so to speak. It is meant to be bright, in other words. So, let's just nip over here to one of the stores, which shouldn't have external lighting inside it. And unfortunately, previously, it certainly did. And now... It looks like a normal shop. Yes, the lighting is indicative of the ambient lighting around it. There's a little bit of blue-white lighting here coming from this sign for nanos. And if we go into the nano department, there's a very much of a blue hue on the walls and on my character and on the floor coming from the giant carbonium crystal here. It's also shining blue light up onto the uh, ceiling. Hopefully you can make that out over YouTube. But it is on my monitor. And again, if we go into the implant section, see in here it's sort of orangey where the light is coming from, over the doors, etc. And same again. Also, the um, icon symbols for like adventurer, agents, etc. are also, uh, they've got a lot more punch and sharpness to them now than they did previously. They're a lot more 3D, a lot easier to read. And the detail is such that now, if I go up to first person on this machine, I can actually read that says, please select your implant to continue. And there's a picture of a brain and a couple of others. So yes, lots of fun things. If we nip to different areas, it will end up being another six hour video to demonstrate everything. I really, <laughs> I really can't without doing that. But yes, you can see the shadows are tack sharp now and they don't leave traces behind. Which they were doing before, especially with the burden of competence used to, for whatever reason, cause all kinds of problems. Shadow there from one of the cruiser ships lifting. As it meanders its way all the way up to the Norton supply haulers up in the sky there. So you're disappearing into the hole. Gives you more of a sense of scale, I suppose. But everything here looking rather nice. If we go to Newland itself, probably bump into Savick, creator of Savick's map of Rubicar. She might not be here now. She was before. Nope, she's gone. Um, but you can see there just how much more vivid the blues are on the building lights. And at night, they do look rather amazing, especially here where you've got this singular light source all of this is being lit by it pretty nice some areas are blown out but i think by design you have to remember that there are two suns in the sky on rubicar and we're in a desert so yeah now then let's nip to shadowlands 
well straight away you can see the Zan hammer there and just how much more detail is on that hammer than you may have realized previously look at the individual little blue lights along the edge there formerly that was just well blue mush and around the edge of it now it actually looks like a very high quality model etc you can even see the little blue teeth there underneath so yes lots of details getting picked out that weren't before like how luminous the buttons are on the statues Previously, they were just sort of vague white blobs on the statues that were almost hard to read. Whereas now, very clear, distinct. The statues look old and aged. There's a lot of red light in Inferno. It's part of how it's designed. But if you look up at this chap here, Forrester Galzine, you'll see he actually has a, a humanoid face there inside that hood. It's a little difficult to see with all the sort of aura thing he's got running on him. If you look closely, you'll see it. It looks like a man's face, possibly with a couple of coins on his eyes. The same is pretty much true of a lot of the NPCs. You now see them in a different light. Now, if you care to look at the um, six-hour video and just scan through for various bits, you'll see various mobs, etc., especially uh, unredeemed mobs. Like They have shoulder pads and wristbands and, and sort of shin pads that are made of different material than the rest of the NPC itself. It's as though they're wearing pieces of armor, which is really rather cool. Well, here's somebody with um, a pair of, I think, special edition axes, and they again have their own unique look to them. Look at the little fine dots on them there, etc. Really rather cool, yes indeed. And pretty much all of Shadowlands is like this, and I ran through pretty much all of it on the video, so yeah. Do check that out. Unfortunately, it is only at 1080 60 and it was on Twitch, so it's only at 6 megabytes a second. So, unless I'm standing still, it's a little bit mushy. However, this video should not be. There you go, there's the, the suns and stars. I've got a bit more footage, I will add, which is nighttime on Rubicar, which will give you a better idea for this video. Okay, it's unfortunately nighttime at the moment. But you can probably make out just how sharp the lettering is over there. I have taken dozens of screenshots and spent an entire six hour stream running around all of Rubicar, Shadowlands, etc. looking at different places. Now, I also have this. Um, I'm going to close my mission window for now. There we go. So you can kind of see what's going on under the hood. The GPU is only running at 52%. My frames are a little low, but there's a lot of people here, but this is about more or less where it would normally be. And don't forget, I'm also recording this video. But if you look over here, typically on this engine, the market search terminal was just a blob of color and light, whereas now it's really quite sharp. You can even make out different weapons, like that's a shotgun there, etc. Uh, hopefully this translates on the video, but I can see the little fine lines moving up the dreadlock arms and gear poster. As I look around at various people's armour, like this guy has got all kinds of mixed gear on there. As has that player there. I don't think he liked me looking at him, um, etc. But if you look at the bureaucrat droid over here, Hopefully you can pick out that it actually has a sheen to it, rather like a Stormtrooper, only not quite as shiny. You can see the same sort of effect on the Keeper here. Unfortunately, we're at the night time, which is the worst time ever for doing this. But if you want to watch the six hour stream or scan through the highlights, you will see an awful lot of areas that we stop and look at. You can see here, mission agencies, this is now nice and tack sharp. And when the sun is on this side of it, it casts a shadow, but so does the writing. You can see that on the six hour stream, if you want to have a scan through, there's a lot of it. Some of the nice things that have happened is when you now enter the mission agency building, I haven't tried the Omni one yet, but I'm assuming it's the same. You no longer get the exterior lighting coming in, or if it is coming in, not nearly as much. The glass tables look rather glass, Esque, and if we run in here and take a quick look at the alien weapons, you can see there it's dependent on which way 
you're looking at them and where the light is. If I just move the camera rather than the character and move it smoother. Yes, slow jazz has come to haunt me once again. You see there how distinct the colours are now on the crossbow, as you see in there, and the blue string thing that's part of it. Everything feels a lot sharper, a lot cleaner. Now, just to show you the effect, if you pay attention to the lighting over here on the wall, you'll notice there's a paler area next to the plant pot where the light from this object is actually having an effect. And if I run toward it, if you look at the character, if I run back, actually it's hard to see because I've got, <laughs> I've got the stellar buff running. But that lighting is actually, there you go, you can see it there. If I move away, non, you see this side of the character? As I strafe towards it, you'll notice that the lighting from it is now reflecting off the armour of this character. Let's get away from the slow jazz, shall we? Now, some other problematic areas we had previously where... See, that's nice and sharp as well now. That kind of carries on looking the way it does. Now, this video would end up being six hours long if I were to go through every conceivable area looking at all the things that now look better. So I'm not going to. The grid itself. Let's, uh, let's just nip upstairs. And we had horrible problems with it before, but you can now probably see if I go first person how much better the interior of the grid looks. It's not freaky anymore. You can see there is Rubicar on the ceiling and these rather interesting spikes poking down. Some people apparently never knew they were there until I pointed them out on the stream. But there you go. It's the things we look at every day that surprise us. Yes, they are. Okay, let's go to Borealis and look in one of the very much a problem area, which was the neutral fair trade stores. See over there, somebody over here has a light source, or several people do looking at it. So the shadow is consistent with what's going on over there, as is the lighting on this character. Although it is getting slightly confused because I think actually there's several people with lights on over here, making the whole area really rather bright. But one of the main problem areas in Borealis and other places was in the fair trade stores here. They were completely blown out, over bright, over white. And now, they are not. Even in the day, they look pretty much exactly like this. You can see the detail on the tiles. Let's go into the nano store. Same again. This is now the um, predominant light source, the, well, carbonium crystal floating up there. You can see it's casting a little bit of blue. Hopefully you can pick that out on the floor and the walls versus in here, which obviously you can see is a little, little lot more orangey. Now uh, let's go into the implant section. Same again. So now let's quickly check the uh, trade skill. You can see there, even the sign itself is now quite distinct in what those items are. And you can even see the deliberate lines across the sign as though it were a neon sign. Even that droid looks better. And here we are, we're in the trade skill, and again, it is not blown out at all. Same goes for the medical missions. There is a little bit too much bloom, I would say, but bloom isn't active on this profile that I'm using. So it's all good, let's go look at him. Yeah, you can see, he looks pretty cool. The heavy noten tank has a sheen on the edges here. Thank you for rotating. So he does look rather good. Pretty much every area now looks more detailed and a lot sharper. Apparently I've been spotted. <laughs> I can't go anywhere. My God. As you can see, Borealis, some of the, I'm not doing anything to this video in post-processing. I'm not adding any uh, saturation or sharpening or anything of the like. This is exactly what I'm seeing. Even the ships in the far distance, as you can see there, the, uh, the noted mining ships, look a damn sight better. And we're now watching one of the uh, Notum cargo haulers gradually meandering his way to that roof. Are you doing the fashion show today? Oh, God. Yeah. Excuse me one moment. I'm not sure what time the fashion show is. I am doing that later. 
I'm kind of co-hosting voting sort of thing. Right, let's just nip to Newland. There we are. But straight away you can see the blue on the buildings over there is a lot more distinct. Savik was watching this and I think that's Savik right there. Yeah, she does exist. She's got a bit of weed stuck on the side of her head. I think she's actually uh, there. <laughs> making the making the tweak graphics video. So you can see Savik is, is looking pretty fine over here. You can see the uh, reflectivity on the shoulder pads of her armor there, whereas the rest of the mercenary's armor is fairly matte, as it should be, which is kind of cool. But what we noticed when we came here again was the mission, mission agency sign. It's a little blurred on this side, but sharp as anything on this side, because this is the front of the sign, and this is the reverse of the sign, and you're actually seeing the other side shining through. It's kind of a weird deal, but there we are. These people are enjoying this lady, um, but there we are. So yes, th this is the Newland thing. I went into the backyard in Newland and it was like pretty bright. You can see there the sign as well is rather bright, etc. This guard guardsman's armour is a lot better. You can see how it's been affected by the light around it, etc. So overall, the whole thing is looking really rather good. Yes, it is. Now, as I say, I could make a exasperatingly long video on all the differences uh, these tweaks make to various areas around Rubicar. However, it would be about six hours long, which it turns out is how long the stream video is where I was checking out just about everybody and everything. Like, for instance, did you notice Ofar's is wearing a woolly jumper and leather jacket. I never knew he was quite so stylish. So yes, it's a massive improvement, I think. Like, look at the detail on the Bronto Burger sign. Did you notice all these little etched lines were there? There's a lot of other things that are quite surprising, and I think the one that surprised most people, let's nip to Shadowlands, um, was some of the redeemed characters in the game. I do want to show everybody... Oops, Show everybody this, at least. Now, you've all seen this guy a hundred times, right? Forrester Galzion. Do you ever notice he's got a face? He's here. Eyes, mouth, nose, weird ridges because he's like some alien dude. Yeah. Shadowlands... Um, seems to have benefited the most from this because I think probably because it was done later and has a lot better looking assets etc there um, we ran the entirety of Shadowlands so Job all the way to Pandemonium on the stream it's right at the very end I do it on my fixer and try and do it in under 30 minutes and fail because I kind of went the wrong way a couple of times but there we are same again with this chap. He too has a face. So let's whiz back. Yes, people people like to chat to me in game and I don't mind one bit. You can probably tell as well just how much more detail you're seeing on that moon. In fact, on all three moons. Rubicar has three. You probably notice on the garden terminals as well that the little buttons that you click are now really quite luminous compared to the rest of them. You will even see that during the day. And that these lights actually pulse. Although I think you could probably see that on the uh, the former setup with the Secret World. So this does not actually add any more stability, unfortunately. However, it does add a lot more eye candy for literally no <laughs> performance hit at all. See how much nicer Job looks the marble, the detail in the marble, etc. I mean, everywhere we went in that six-hour stream looked impressive. Another place that was quite often blown out and we went in to check was in here, the Professionals Society. And they're all basically the same mesh. You can see here it's really bright in here, but you can now see the detail on the walls properly. It's not utterly blown out, although the back of the building does seem to get brighter and brighter. Go all the way to the keeper. Do you see the sword he's got there? 
That drops in the new pyramid of home, you know. Didn't know that? Yeah, it's this thing. Corrupted edge. Let's just pop that on. Have a good look at that sword that the keeper is holding there. And... Yep, it's the same mesh. It's actually a really good weapon. I just like the big thing more. Sue me. Yeah, that, the, the big one has a much better crit. So, yes, it's all working. It's all rather good. But it's the detail you can pick out. I probably should have done this on a different character. There's another ton of auras. Like, when I look up there, I can see all the posts holding up the fence on the platform there, including the portal. The distinction between the lines on the two on the sides of the um, walkway there. The individual panes of glass on the apartments over there. They're all pretty impressive. Um, it is still slightly blown out during the day cycles. But yeah, generally speaking, it looks damned good. Yes, it does. We haven't fixed ICC, unfortunately. That still lags like hell. You can see the detail now on the statues at Job. Actually look like statues carved from marble or similar. So still gets shocking frame rates at uh, ICC. Nothing I can do about that, I'm afraid. But look how much sharper and clearer everything is. Look at the signs rotating around. They look pretty awesome now. As do most other things. You can see the light emanating from there. And this character who's got a light bar on. But it's now directional and lights up player characters. I mean, look at the reflectivity on that yarn. In fact, we on the stream, we actually went into the phase font store. This, this thing over here, the phase font shop. To look at the yarns in there. And they're actually pretty stunning looking. I'll try and demonstrate here, where we've got a little bit of light. But you can see how the lighting is changing. Unfortunately, the, uh, the aura haze is not helping. It's actually spoiling the effect of anything. Oh, there we go. Now it's stopped for a second. You can see how there, it's picking up the light. And the aura's come in and buggered it. What, which one is that? Is that Corsain screen? I think it is. Or is it that one? I don't know. Everything's auras on, on Keepers. So, yeah. You can see the uh, nice, sharp detail. The Keeper's shoulder pads and helmet really fit this rather well. <laughs> Although, I'm pretty sure you get terrible neck ache flying one of these. Anyhow, yes. So there we go. It's not fixed the new engine, but it certainly has improved much of it. Like, look how much better these statues look now. They're a little creepy. But that's, I think, the model they used for the statue armor. I won't go into phase font on this video. It's all on the stream video, if you care to scan through it. I know there's six hours of it, but you just hit pause and mouse over the, uh, the play bar at the bottom. You can see various areas. There's a lot of um, nice surprises with this, including, you know, how various unread and redeemed mobs actually have different pieces of armor on with different uh, reflectivity. So you will find that certain mobs have shiny shoulder pads and don't look like they're covered in oil anymore. And the emergency exit got me because it bloody does, doesn't it? Every time. You can see there, whoever has... Yep, they've got two light sources, that star and that star there. Casting light, so I'm getting two split shadows as I move into it. It does still bug out slightly, but that's the engine itself. All we've done is just improved how well it works with everything else. See this guy's armour here. The really awesome looking sort of samurai-esque theme this guy's wearing here. It is pretty cool. Yes, I like that one. Yeah, it is a very cool look. I'm not sure if it works with having both. There's like three different shoulder pads going on there. But hey, you do you. So yes, there we are. Unfortunately, it's night time, so it's difficult to show you anything else that it does with the lighting. But like I say, if you want to see more examples, by all means, go look at the six-hour 
uh, testing graphic tweaks stream. It's only at 1080p, unfortunately, and yes, that means that uh, the bitrate is rather low, but that's Twitch for you, unfortunately. It does do that. Yes, even in here, it's not all blown out anymore. Nano department, you can actually see the ceiling without going blind. Ditto the trade department is now looking rather nice. Okay, folks, bye for now.